Hello. Hello. Yeah. Sorry. Hey, Harish, got disconnected. Yeah. So, uh, I was telling once we get to know the piece of code, and from there we we can we can come. Ah, that's why I'm questioning. See, how will you get the piece, get to know the piece of code? So, see, we, your explanation we, resolved around. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So when you run DBCC open run or when you run DM underscore EXCC request and where where we get to know in our case explicitly we have a stored procedure inside the customized stored procedure uh, from uh -huh. uh, DM underscore EXCC request sessions and requests we have written our own stored procedure. So when you run that stored okay. procedure it's called uh, USP underscore server block. When you run that stored uh -huh. procedure it will give you all the details in one glance, like from which course, what are all the sessions are Correct. Running. Yeah. Oh, one, one. Let's yeah. go through. Yeah. So now, when you run this stored procedure, what are the details that you get? Yes, that's right. It will give you speed ID and it will give you from uh -huh. host which speed is running and also who is the owner uh -huh. and also you will get the, uh -huh. the code, like the SQL text. Uh, uh, SQL text. Correct. For the query. Yeah, for the query. Yeah, query. Is it all the queries? Yeah, for, for each spread, then the, say, say for example, I mean, what all queries are running against the SQL Server engine? Everything will come up there? Yes, each thread. For each Every thread, thread. I mean. for each thread associated query. Yeah. Correct, fine. So now from each of these threads, what, next what will you do once you get this result? And and from there we see what is the long running thread. So there will be a, a time also, time uh, time column. And with, we'll, uh -huh. we'll uh, run that order by uh, time DESC with that we come to know uh -huh. the long running session. The long running session at long running piece of code. So from there we okay. start looking, looking into are there any uh, indexes of, and if there, are, if there are any indexes and what is the fragmentation levels on those tables. Okay. So, so we run DB uh -huh. underscore, uh, DM underscore DB underscore index uh, physical stats. So basically, it will give uh -huh. us uh, the fragmentation percentage for each index. Uh -huh. there is, uh -huh. uh, if there is any index maintenance required, like the fragmentation is over 30%, we go for index rebuild. If it is between 10 uh -huh. to 30, we go for the arc. So, then whatever so why, what, is the, what is the difference between now? I mean, why can't you directly go for rebuild? So, rebuild is... Why do you want to go for the arc? process, basically, it will, it will drop all the existing indexes and it will recreate the one. So the uh -huh. that can help for Microsoft fragmentation. So the fragmentation is of over 30 percent. We can go for rebuilding the indexes. So when you have a fragmentation between 10 to 30 percent, we can just it, when you perform VR, it will it will not draw the existing index, but it will just uh -huh. rearrange the pages in the index. Okay, so no, that's a micro. I understand the point here. Yeah. So when you are doing the reorg, okay. Will your tables be available then? I mean, will, can you still query the data? Yes, online operation it is. Okay, and what about the retail part? We will also online. Okay, then I'm just saying, okay, I, I, I'm just saying, okay, again. Yeah. So let's say I as answer the application and I come and tell you, hey boss, why do you want to worry or can you not do a rebuild? So how will you convince them? No, I would, as a DP, I would say this is this. Yeah. So Microsoft gives us a recommendation, so there has to be some kind of, you know, what do you call it, some yeah. reason for that, right? Yeah, exactly. So what do you feel that is? So maybe the index rebuild is expensive. Yeah, part totally right, okay, yeah. I'm just trying to understand that. That's it. Yeah, expensive uh, part like when you run index rebuild, it may, it has to, uh, uh, it, it will have a huge impact on our storage, maybe that might be, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that that could be the uh -huh. reason. I okay. Think, okay. It's a bulk operation, so it it, it will recall everything in the log, but it may lead to a get out of the log file. Okay. Okay. So, fine. That, that's fine. Okay. So, you said you, and one of the areas you said was deadlock, right? Yeah. So, let's uh, you said you'll run on some trace packs. What are trace packs? 1204, 1222. Okay. You should be running, I mean, you should be turning on both of these, is it? Yeah, so uh, so when you run, when you enable uh, these two flags and we get no, my question is, is any one not enough or you want you should be turning on both so of them? When you run enable one two zero four, it will give very basic information like the deadlock has been occurred. So when you enable one two four, uh -huh. it will give more granular information like the deadlock victim and deadlock process ID and uh, the behind the the statement everything. Uh huh. Okay. okay. 
So what what will you do? So you turn on the trace flags and then what will you do? This is to trace basically. So dead logs, we don't need to anything anything at in the live system because so if you uh, the SQL Server automatically takes care of resolving the dead logs and and once the once you see that some dead logs is occurring and by taking by collecting the required information from trace or error log, so we can perform the, the root cause analysis. So why this dead log has um, uh, Occurring and uh -huh. uncertain, and are there any whatever the whatever the source procedures or processes are running behind that? Okay, so Naresh, my question is precisely that. Yeah. You said you will do the analysis. Yeah. You will do it, or you will give it to someone senior in the team. How how does it work? Yeah, definitely. Why my seniors will take care of part of the Okay, and you take interest in learning that? Yes, yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. And you said that uh, okay. You explain implementing SQL security of text version seconds. Okay. Yes. So, what kind of uh, security implementation do you think you know is ideal, like permissions and everything? So, permissions. Uh, so, in our case, like we do, uh, we do have um, uh, mixed mode authentication, and most of mostly we have Active Directory users and uh, whoever uh -huh. uh, wants a SQL access, and we get we get their domain uh, account added to. SQL admin list with appropriate roles assigned, depending on their uh -huh. business requirement. That's how we, that's the process we follow. Okay, okay. So you don't give them individual permissions. Is it? No, I mean, you give them permissions only three roles. We have a group like oh. group. So we, so developers, we have one group, and administrators, we have one group. So we just uh -huh. know, whoever the new comers, so we just. Uh, add that person to appropriate group so that he gets all the required permission. Correct. So that is the Windows level. You create a Windows group and then you know, add it to SQL. Yeah. My point is, do yeah. you give individual permission to them yeah. or do you give permissions only only through roles? So in individual uh, SQL login side, you mean to say SQL level? Login. No, no. My question is the permission part. I understand okay. the group and login that you're talking about. Yeah. So how do you give permission to them? Is it through roles? Or if, do you give permission? Let's say the grant execute on so and so procedure to this particular login. Yeah. Do you give that way or do you just assign the role? We assign the roles and for example, if anybody, suppose if anybody wants to run production. So a developer, uh -huh. they, just, they just want to trade something in production and they ask us to give the permission to run a profiler. So the first case is which you want to the grant or the alter alter state permissions to them, so it will be able to uh, perform that activity. Okay. We do follow yeah. both yeah, the answers. You said you've been part of migrations. Yeah. So it's all. Uh, was it a, what kind of migration? In place migration? Is it a parallel migration? How was it? It's a parallel side by side migration. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So from 2008 to 2012, recently I have involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You also did from 2000 to 2005? 2000, no, 2000 to, I have done from 2008 to 2012. Okay. Okay, because you said 2000, 2005 and 2005 to 2008. No, maybe I have written it. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, so one more thing here. Yeah. So where is exactly your office? So my current office? My office is in the uh, last thing, uh, is right? The head server office, yeah. In Chennai. Chennai, okay. Well, no, no, Chennai, where exactly is that? It's in uh, DLS. DLS, okay, okay. Okay, so what are the maintenance tasks that you perform as part of, you know, your maintenance plans? Or what is that you implement? So we have um, a maintenance plan for index rebuild, uh, like index uh -huh. maintenance and performing some cleanup activities and backup, uh, backup of system databases and also uh -huh. uh, backup retention and for all these things we have maintenance plan. Okay, so can you give me a brief about all uh, you know, each of these tasks? Yeah, so backup system databases, just one one task. Uh, to take full backup of all the system databases and second thing including is, MDB? No, MDB is not take backup. Okay. okay. And um, so cleanup activities, one is job history cleanup and maintenance plan history cleanup and we do maintain 
retention of four weeks and uh, whatever the history we have older than four weeks automatically deleted and the backup okay. also same so we do maintain four weeks of backup and we give the backup location so and backup uh, extension okay by giving the backup location and the extension name it will just go and uh, delete all the all the backup older than four weeks okay uh, Yeah. Okay. Uh, Andre, I, I didn't want you to come. You know, just each head by head. I just wanted to understand. You know, what you do as part of each, you know, activity. Okay. So when you say backup, you know, back uh, system data like this, what exactly? Why exactly do you do that? I mean, why do you need a master model or you know, MSDB? MSDB, I understand. You'll have jobs, you know, stuff. Yeah. So yeah, the model is the template. Like, so model is <laughs> sometimes we get. Uh, Uh, there is a chance it's like master and model databases are get corrupted and when you uh, uh when your master and model is corrupted also your sql server will not work so we need to rebuild master database in case master is corrupted we need to rebuild master database for that instance when you rebuild master database it's a kind of installing fresh master database within the with the same instance in the in the same instance so whatever the data we had before like log in link server everything all the configuration we lost all the configuration so to get back those okay. information back to the system we should have a backup of our master database uh mm-hmm. so similarly model also it will have like a, uh um so whenever okay i have template database file template okay. database. yeah so next task what what is the next task next task is uh, index rebuild and index rearch the index maintenance activities mm-hmm. so you do both of them so we we have we used to follow both of them about 6 months back uh-huh. and we totally eliminated that uh, index rebuild from maintenance plan we have developed our own custom process so they were okay uh, we gather all the indexes and their execution sorry and their fragmentations into one centralized table and on top of uh-huh. that there will be another stored procedure which will kick off and it will it will scan through that table and for whatever uh-huh. the index uh, having over 30% index rebuild and between 10 to 30% it will perform index tr and rest all it will perform it will not perform any index operation so we go with the, the regular maintenance plan irrespective of the fragmentation so whatever the index is okay. in the database if you configure index rebuild that like rebuild for any particular database it will go on the mm-hmm. it will go on rebuild all the indexes so that's again um, So because we start that we have developed this custom process. So okay. apart from that, yeah, clean up activities like job history and okay. maintenance plan history and also yeah, okay. backup retention. Okay. So do you anyway do you put also put the update stats part? Yeah, update statistics also. So one of the tasks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So why do you think that is important? Update statistics. so on the day to day uh, so maybe today i'm creating a database and i have some data in my uh, t- my tables and so uh-huh. based on that uh, we have uh, we create index when we create indexes and based on the statistics uh, based on the statistics on that particular table or when you have a multiple indexes on a particular table depending on the statistics that we have uh, in the table so sql server come up with the, the execution plan So if your if your uh-huh. statistics are not up to date, then uh, the SQL Server may come up with bad plan, and that leads to uh, our queries to become slower. Okay. Yes. To to make so your index rebuild will not help you. So index rebuild when you have index rebuild within uh index rebuild itself uh, performs this uh, update statistics also when you perform index rebuild you don't need to. for some update statistics in case of rearch we need to have explicitly uh, this update statistics okay so you mean to say when you update uh, rebuild indexes it will also update your uh, statistics statistics right. both for columns as well as index yeah okay 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 and uh, yeah what is it so easy yeah You are also performing session for 2000, 2005, 2008 R2. Yes, 2000, no, 2005, 2008 R2. Yes, you have to update the resume, man. Eh? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. So tell me, what what are the things that you would touch base upon, you know, when you install in 2008 R2 or you know about versions? Yeah. So what are the areas? Like, you know, not the everything each and every one, but what are main areas that you would like to touch base upon? 
Yeah, basically we need to, we follow a checklist where we gather all the information like uh, whether it is a default or named instance, if it is a name, what is the name and what are the features uh -huh. that we want to install and uh, along with uh -huh. that uh, the service accounts required for each feature and also uh -huh. uh, the data directories and what is the location of uh, data files, user databases and user log files and the 10 DB way to put and backup location um, uh -huh. and also ISA password that we can set and also what are the sysadmin accounts that we need to add to SQL, uh, uh -huh. SQL administration list. Um, yeah, these are all the things that we can set in a standalone installation. Okay. So you said service account. What, what exactly is that? The service account is like a, um, the account with which uh, whatever the SQL, the, whatever the service that we are installing, like uh, when you are installing SQL mm -hmm. server, and with which account your SQL service has to be executed. That we define uh, in the service account along with the uh, password. So with that, uh, it's a non-expirable account. Uh, uh -huh. yeah, so if you Why can I run it with the default account like you know, the yeah. empty service or system on network? Uh, ENT inbuilt account. You, you change it manually, right? right. See, by default, you'll have a, when you install it, will have it. You change it manually. Why do you do that? So, so for better controlling purpose, maybe it's like uh, when, we, when you create a uh, domain account. Mm. Okay, so next time you go back and ask them, now why have you added this stuff? Okay? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. And uh, you said you will take a look at the backup price and everything, right? right yeah. yeah, but all the drives that I want. Okay. Yeah. So, do you separate, you know, put in, you know, different different databases and separate? I mean, how does it work there? You know, how, how do you basically, separate files? Uh, we basically put log files and, uh, sorry, sorry, for each database, we make sure that mm -hmm. the data and log files are not uh, together at the same time. So, we maintain, mm -hmm. suppose I have a X and Y drive, and I have a uh -huh. A and B databases. I'll put A database data file in X drive and log file in Y drive, and B database uh -huh. data uh, data file in Y drive and log file in X drive. So, so oh, you mean for each database will have different different two uh -huh. set of files? No, 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 no. So I'm just giving. We'll have um, okay. We have. Like, and then you are going to separate it. Right, okay, separate it. Right. So why is that? So. For better I/O purpose, that's what I heard from my seniors. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I see you have been certified, right, for yeah. 2008. Yeah. R2. Yes. And I'm sure this gets covered. Yes. Isn't it? Okay. See, you have a very good knowledge on things. A few areas just just cannot you know, cover it up. A few small small patches to cover up. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay, and one more thing. So, what about a 10 dB watt? 10 dB. Hey, I mean, you kind of, see, again, I'm just asking, there's no right answer, wrong answer, you know, okay? I'm just asking how you do it. Okay, so 10 dB, how do you put it? You put it on a separate drive, you have a own drive, you combine it to the system databases, how does it work? So, we have a separate drive for uh, 10 dB, and we have multiple files for uh, 10 dB. So, we create uh, temp uh, secondary data, uh, we create the data file count equal to our processor count. I'm, I'm sorry, I, sorry, I didn't get that. What is it? Yeah, first of all, we have a separate drive for 10 dB, and uh, hmm. we maintain multiple files for 10 dB, like uh, uh, hmm. multiple NDF files. Okay. 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 Fine, man. Okay. Thank you, Professor. I think that's that's pretty much it from my end. Okay. okay. And you are in Chennai, right? Right now. Right. Correct, and you will you can make yourself available for a you know, face to face interview also. Yes, yeah. Okay, so let let me just you know kind of uh, circle back and we'll get back to you. You know, okay, you okay. give further. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Have a good evening. Bye bye. bye.